Hey, it's Kyle. Before we start this bonus behind the scenes episode, I have three pieces of news that you are going to want to know about. The first is that we will be having an anniversary stream on Wednesday, September 25th at 8 p.m. Central Time. This is going to be just a fun hangout where me, Emily, Ari, and Hallie watch 16 characters from season one and 16 characters from season two duke it out in Super Smash Bros. Brawl to find the strongest Quest Friends character. The second is that we have auditions for more vocalists for some upcoming musical segments. Specifically, we have auditions for Kike. Sparky, and Irene. And finally, you can get Under the Neighborhood and 317 other tabletop role-playing games for only $10. Did you know that there are no widely available Braille dice for tabletop role-playing games? Well, by purchasing this bundle, you can help change that. The Dots RPG project has been working for years to create high-quality Braille polyhedral dice and get them out into the world. This would allow blind people to have an affordable, beautiful, and fun way to be on equal footing at the gaming table. Because you just can't beat the feeling of rolling a maleta with your own hands. And these dice are finally ready. Dots just needs to raise the funds to make them happen. And that's where you can help. In the description, we have a link to the TTRPGs for Accessible Gaming Charity Bundle on itch.io, where you can get, again, Under the Neighborhood and 317 other games for just $10. All funds raised will go directly into making colorful, high-quality acrylic braille dice, and they even offer fancy metal versions if, if they get enough support. So again, you can check out the link in the description for that game bundle, and you can connect with Dots at DotsRPG on socials to get updates and learn more about their gaming accessibility efforts. This bundle is open until October 20th, but I'd recommend, so you don't forget, go get it now. So again, three pieces of news. One, an anniversary stream. Two, auditions for musical songs. And three, a really, really cheap tabletop role-playing game bundle for Braille Dice. All right, let's get into the episode itself. If you enjoy it and you want to see a video version of it, you can click the secret fourth link in the description where you'll go to our Patreon and we have a video version of it. Hope you enjoy I can, I, I can w- rant about musicals <laughs> anytime. You can, but luckily for everyone's sake, I did not record that this time. And this time we're going to go straight into Snurf Error. Snurf Error. That's my intro this episode. It's Rest Friends in Reverse. Ah, very clever. Okay, but why? Because this is a Necromon episode. Oh. This is for Little Mon Big City, where we went on an adventure. I love how unimpressed Emily was by you. We, <laughs> we went on an adventure I made for you, because we're hopping straight into the first question, which is for Emily. Actually, it's for all of us, but it's really for Emily, which is what made you come to the conclusion of getting Irene's Necromon to save Rasputin and not the normal group? It's a question for me. You were the one who asked for it. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. It just felt right. You were like, I want Irene's mom to, like, hang out and help Boyle Rat free Rasputin. Hallie made a reference to breaking out Rasputin. Yeah, she wanted to do that since literally the first episode, yeah. Yeah. first session. At the end of the first session, she's like, I'm going to jailbreak Rasputin. And since I knew at that point, because some things change, but for that first arc, I knew he was going to be replaced by the changeling from literally go. So when Hallie's like, I want to jailbreak him, I'm just sitting there like, please, <laughs> please don't do that. Like the introduction of one of the main villains of the entire campaign hinges on you not jailbreaking Rasputin. That's literally the only thing it hinges on. I I think it was they would be a great group to badly commit crimes. I mean, 
I wouldn't say they badly committed crimes. Well, they, no, but they committed a lot of assaults. No, they specifically they did, assaults. They did pretty well, but I wasn't going into it thinking, wow, they're going to be so good at committing crimes. Because how many people did they take out? They took out the ragtime guy on three separate occasions. They took out a right. fury and they took out two overseers all in the length of one afternoon. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And then the other reason this came to be eventually is because we were doing the crossover episodes and with Irene's, it was her and Hilda with some Mon trainers that they fought against. And it, in most situations, there could have been a way to be like, oh, Irene's Necromon aren't here. But since it was a Necromon themed adventure, uh, the one with Hilda and Irene and the guest stars, it felt weird that her mom just weren't there. And I didn't want to make Ari and Hallie join for a session where they were only Mon. Like, I, I do have them do that in an upcoming episode, but in that one, it's really designed around. This is Irene and her Necromon working as a team rather than how they usually work, which is kind of in the sidelines unless they try to go rogue. So we had to come up with some sort of justification for why they weren't there. And Emily had asked multiple times to jailbreak Rasputin for Boidle Rat. So I was like, Hallie wanted it in the first session. Emily wanted the Mon to do it. I have set up a little bit that Boidle Rat has this missing her family thing. And I just miss Rasputin, even though he was technically only there for one episode and then it was a fake until the most recent episode. I, I also I also think that like in the Die Hard episode, I think like the ne like we, we played a little bit of the Necromon doing a bit of side things uh, and like we all jived really well doing that. So I think we also wanted to have more of that so this was like a good excuse yeah i think that's probably part of also why was like so we could have a fun necromon adventure every time we do it people say uh the, the players say we want to do it more and i say that too we all say we should do this again uh every time we have a mon focused adventure and i feel like we both like i i really like that you know, first, at first, we just were given the concept of like, oh, you know, these are the different necromons of Irene. And I think we just kind of randomly got assigned a necromon. Like, I don't think we say, I wanted this one. And like, I think we each gave them the personalities. Like, you know, we each kind of made them unique. Like, oh, Ali yeah. made them, made Pokio just a very like anxious, like, let's, let's get this done, team. Come on, gang. But also like, wrong. Most of the time, <laughs> I think Pokio had the biggest glow up in part because I think the other Mon had some inherent personality yeah. to them. Like the Mossies kind of had this sleepy vibe and Malaya especially. I mean, you were. Yeah, you came out swinging with Malaya. It was like Malaya is big and buff and wants to fight. Yeah. And like literally looking at the character design, that's what Malaya is. Yeah. Pokio didn't really have that. And yeah. then. Hallie decided she wanted Pokio to be a chef in the Necromon Thief. <laughs> and Pokio just became the biggest asshole after that. <laughs> Pokio <laughs> is terrible. Not as bad as Booker. He's but... such an ass a little asshole. He's like uh discount mess, I guess, but like it's yeah. still very good. <laughs> so we went and we did this adventure. Uh we played a familiar problem because Ari had heard about it because it's co-written by a Critical Role member, and they did a session. Yeah. So we had talked about Ari maybe running that for us for a live stream or stream or an episode or something one day. And then when this idea came about, I was like, oh, well, I'll just use a familiar problem since we already have that established. And then that might have been how Rasputin got more involved, because I was like, the magic is a core aspect of this, that it's single use. And it's weird. It's not the kind you normally have. And then I remembered, well, Rasputin mentions in the first episode that he has black magic. He has dark mm. magics. Dark magics. So the idea of you just all getting Rasputin's magic, and except for Booker, 
and causing problems was was fun. The Booker thing tied in with a personal want of mine, which is I really, really wanted Booker to do underground fighting ever since Irene's rival when he started just fighting everybody. Like he was the one who was like, I want to get this underground jousting club. I want to fight. I want to join it where Hilda's like, all right, we just got to solve some crimes. I was like, Booker, (laughs) I had the idea for the longest time of a short story of Booker sneaking out and doing underground fighting. So the idea of being able to make him the butcher was just a great way of of tying him in and also giving free exposition. It's like, hey, I can give you a character that will get you exactly where you need to go, but it doesn't feel like I'm throwing in a cheap NPC because it's mm-hmm. how I'm getting another character and another player involved. Yeah. I also feel like a lot of these like personality things, part of it is like, making it clear that these necromon are each their own little individual beings and we're not like forcing them to like cockfighting ring or something like yeah. they each have their own reasons and have free will and so i feel like having them go off on an adventure to help each other helps cement that as well it also reinforces, I think, the idea, because I, I mention, I give like a bullshit excuse of like res points or whatever for why Oman fights don't actually hurt. But I right. feel like it's really felt when you go to the black box to fight Bo- Booker, the butcher, and it's made really clear that this is not a Necromon duel. This is a full on fist fight. And you know it's different because every Mon except for Malaya is scared out of their fucking mind. <laughs> Malaya and Booker are fun because I feel like they're both ready to fight, but in very different ways. Yeah. I feel like Malaya is like kind of like the muscle head bro. Like the, yeah, man, I want to fight. want to prove that I'm the biggest guy in the house. And Booker is a mass murderer with a knife. Yeah. Booker is it, Booker is that meme, that video that I think is really funny of the crab with the knife. It like, it's just... I just so I, I love that game. Like who gave it to life? And I feel like that's just Booker. Both Booker and Malaya would kill, but I think for Malaya it would be like Malaya would do it like maybe as a way to protect Irene. Yeah, and Booker is just Booker like Booker would do it for fun. Let's commit a crime. <laughs> Booker kills for sport. Yeah, Booker is the person who like. The, the most, the deadliest game where they put a bunch of people on an island and there's like a rich guy with a gun and he hunts the people down. I feel like if Booker had the money, he would do that. He would hunt people. He would be like that that Nicolas Cage uh, Five Nights at Freddy's movie where he's just like, <laughs> quiet, who knows where he came from. He's just here to murder some animatronics just for the fun of it. This season is really allowing me to play assholes. <laughs> and it's fun. Just say as somebody, I just I just love love this comment because you started season one playing as Ellie intended her intending her to be an asshole, like in the first episode, being like, I killed a man in the bar, and then they just like slowly softened her more and more until she just was the like, worried grandma. And so it's just very funny that now it's kind of the opposite. We're it's, like <laughs> I I've come into my own as a role player. I'm not so afraid to be a jerk i would still argue you're kind of doing the same though like yeah let's first look at the spinoffs ig very cute wants to be everyone's friend extremely dangerous yeah bert very cute wants to be everyone's friend extremely creepy (laughs) meanwhile you have the like murderer with a heart of gold and then for this one you have irene who from her conception was like a jerk, but also it was important that she cared about her mom from the very beginning. And like, even in this session, we see her act like a a kid. One of the fans on the discord pointed out, this is the first time we see her really be vulnerable. Uh, And then Booker 
Booker is interesting because he is, I feel like he's in many ways Ness amplified. Like Ari mentioned Ness previously, but like Ness was a little criminal. Booker is a full on mass murderer. Ness, you know, eventually grew close to shock and everyone. Booker is ride or die Hilda from the get go, which I think is a really important aspect to him that I love is that he has decided this child is his child. And he will do whatever this child wants. Mm -hmm. But everyone else can get fucked. Yeah. It's very fun to explore his relationship, too, with the Mon. It feels like Booker and the Necromon are more rivals than Irene and Hilda are. Yeah, honestly. Like, Irene claims they're rivals, but they're just friends. Yeah. But, like, Booker and Malaya do, like, a pre-editing like a 20 minute showdown of just like <laughs> i'll fucking fight you no you're too small i'll fucking fight you no you're too small until the other ones are like guys guys calm chill the fuck out it's true now now i do want to see booker versus malaya one-on-one -on -one and how that would go <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know but malaya would not would not uh <laughs> calm down so no all right i have another question which relates to the another aspect of the plot. So we have the one aspect that's jailbreaking Rasputin, connecting with the Mon, and uh, fusion, which is a mechanic I had for a long time, and I think this was the best way to show it. But the other aspect was learning about the Phantoms of the Opera, which was something I was planning not to reveal until, like, the final arc of the campaign, mm. okay. but they just fit in so perfectly when I reread stuff and I was like, Oh, there's some phantom fan. There's a phantom of the opera. And then I listened to the court of miracles and I was like, uh -huh. it'd be really funny if they encountered the court of miracles, a uh, Tim courier organ that was fully improvised. Um, that, that would, that just happened in the moment. Uh, but a question is at the end of it, Rhonda's like, hey, I have some questions about Eddie who was taken before you were. I want to know what happened to Eddie. And Rasputin's like, I need a place for me and my dozens of Boidle rats to live. Can I live with you? And a fan is asked, will Rhonda and Rasputin make good roommates or is this doomed to fail? I don't know if Rasputin can room with anybody that is in his Boidle rats. Yeah, I don't think Rhonda's going to be the issue here. I feel like cuz there's a bunch of people in the in the phantoms and the only one Rhonda ever seems to express disdain for is Lucas Bang, which that's an interesting thing to explore why she doesn't. My guess is that he betrayed the people close to him and was a coward and Rhonda is very ride or die. As is despite all of his faults and him technically being a turncoat Eddie was also ride and die committed to Rhonda. Uh, so I think that might be why she dislikes Lucas. So I feel like he won't have an issue with her specifically. I feel like he's going to have an issue with every other playwright that is part of the Phantoms. And Rhonda's going to have to navigate that issue. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like those two would bring out the best and the worst in each other. Comedy TV show style in like a random flat in the city. They're the odd couple, not romantically, but like the odd couple TV show of two roomies. Yeah, like I, I feel like they wouldn't do well when they're living with a bunch of other people too. But when it's like just them, they're kind of chill, actually. For some reason, I just thought of Rasputin. Popular. You're gonna be popular. <laughs> God damn it. Very, -da 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 -da. popular. Like <laughs> me. With all my boiler rat. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. I dare you to tell me I'm wrong. You know I'm not. You are not incorrect. I also imagine Rhonda being like, this is uh, my fuck up sod Rasputin. Uh, technically, I am significantly older than Rhonda. But yes, I am her fuck up son <laughs> in just like the context of like this person that Rhonda gives extra attention to because of his connection with Eddie. And everyone's like, 
why does he get so much special attention? He's a fuck up. And Brown is like, listen, I know he is, but he's got a big heart. And unlike some people here, he didn't betray anyone. <laughs> and then Lucas Bain gets put out on another shitty mission as Rhonda's way of like breaking him in. I choose to believe that Lucas gets put on the most missions because he is the most expendable. Yeah, that sounds right. Listen, the fans wanted Lucas Bain back. I didn't expect him to come back, but because he's coming back now and not after multiple arcs for him to get character development, that boy's going to have to work to get his redemption. He's going to have to put in the work. That is mostly Sparky's problem. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just had a random thought because we kept joking about like Rhonda and Rasputin being like platonic odd couple. But then I was like, what is the relationship between Rhonda and Eddie? And if there is any attraction, what does that mean for how she views Kike? Oh, no. <laughs> no, please. No. No. Hey there, big fella. No. How you doing? Rhonda is a sapiosexual. <laughs> no, that, that still doesn't... <laughs> So she's only attracted to Eddie. Oh, that's just rude. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> just Kiki, I didn't want you to be attracted to me, but now I'm hurt. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? I know IQ is, 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 uh, is a made up term, but technically we have the same IQ. <laughs> I beat, like, I beat him. I beat him multiple times. So what do you mean he's smarter? Yeah. Well, technically, it was the kids that beat him. You kind of got your ass handed to you both times, so. Mm, incorrect. <laughs> kind of correct. Oh, my goodness. Kike, we joke in the session that Kike would view Sochi in many ways like a rival, like someone who gets, you know, a lot of attention, where she disregards him. She cares more about her rivalry with JFK. Right. I feel like. Eddie is the level of like rival. Yeah. That Kike actually gets. Yeah. But it's the one that he doesn't want. Like yeah. this is uh Lionel more of a rival than uh, than he would be see Eddie. He 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 just does not like the concept of Eddie. <laughs> what has Lionel ever done to you? Well, I won't say <laughs> for risk of spoilers but the current situation with Kike in and Lionel is not good it's uh, very bad it's rather dire and I live in fear for what the uh, future brings it's gonna be a while I have a feeling you're no. gonna be stuck with this for a while no, oh, no! <laughs> I'm not talking like multiple arcs but like no. Probably at least a couple more sessions. God, that's fair. I'll play it by ear. God damn it, Dusty. I can hear him now. All right, let's ask a question. What's the most common complication you personally have to deal with during or before recording? Uh, dog. Dog. Dog is a complication. Usually not our dog, because we don't usually record at home. It's true. Oh, so you're just mentioning my dog in all cases? That's the couple complication. Well, I'm mentioning I'm 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 using it to transition so that I don't have to deal with Dusty or I can transition to me dealing with Dusty while people talk. That is fair. I mean, yeah, <laughs> dog is mine as well. I try to take her out before recording so she's tired, but then she takes some time to wind down. So she actually increases her her hyperactive uh, behavior. Right when recording starts. But I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of nailed it. Like, if I take her out a couple of hours before the recording, then there's the wind, out t wind down time, and then there's the recording. And that's what happened today. And she is asleep. Yeah, we, we usually don't have... Dusty, we usually put at Emily's parents, or we often don't record... So he's not usually a problem, but he is right now. I'm actually, when I finish going through my complications, I will go get him. But I'd say the ones we usually deal with, when I record at home, I get hot as hell because there's a fan that I could put on, but I don't want to put on. And then anxiety. 
<laughs> anxiety is a yeah, big complication. Yeah. I take my I take my busaprone, my busaprone. Uh, I don't do it all the time now, but I used to do it before every recording. That was around the time things like the Tim Curry organ happened was when I took my anti-anxiety meds and I got loose enough to be like, I'm going to be a sexy Tim Curry. Dusty, hey, stop chewing on your feet. <laughs> all right. I'd say let's do two more questions because I'm trying to keep this one actually relatively on rails because again, I am sweating the, my sweat stench is embedding itself no. into the chair right now. <laughs> I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to know that. I want to so discard gonna... this. <laughs> I don't want to know that. Uh, we're going to actually go back to musicals, which we were talking about before we recorded. Oh, no. You said, I don't want to derail. And then you say back to. This musicals. is related. I swear it is a fan question. It is okay. a two parter. Okay. I loved the music in this series. That was the fan. That wasn't me. I wasn't complimenting myself. Okay. You can compliment yourself. That's okay. Yeah. I also, I mean, I haven't listened to, uh, but I, I assume the music is good. So two questions. One, if you could have a Necromon based on the last song you listened to, then what would it be? And what like power element would it have? And then two, what do you think would be a good theme song for your character? And I was specifically chosen to pick Rasputin. And I realistically have two options. I have In the Dark of the Night and I have Rasputin. <laughs> like, I got to choose one of those. And let's think about this. In the Dark of the Night, I think is perfect for Rasputin under two conditions. Instead of talking about like capturing and killing Anastasia Romanov, the whole lyrics are changed so that he is talking about adopting a new pet, specifically a new Boidel rat. It is the song he sang when he adopted Anastasia, who is now Irene's Boidel rat. Uh, but two, In the Dark of the Night is interesting because it's kind of a really dark, cool song listened, but it has these weird dancing bugs that are a little too funny and kind of ruin the vibe a bit. That is the version that our Rasputin has the one with the weird ass bugs and like the tonal whiplash because he's just a goofy guy. He is just a goofy guy. Rasputin is this arcs Vespari and where yeah. Vespari actually redeemed himself. We just replaced a shitty Rasputin with a nicer Rasputin. And that was how he got him redeemed. So yeah, in the dark of the night is a theme for Rasputin. And then the second question is, if you could have a Mon based on the last song you listened to, uh, what would it be and what power would it have? So mine is Hatchet Town from Nerdy Prudes Must Die, a Star Kid musical. And it is a genre of song I really like, which I call The World Freaks Out. It's that. It's Murder, Murder from Jekyll and Hyde. It's uh, the mob song from Beauty and the Beast. Shout out to No Control from the SpongeBob musical. That's also that. Essentially, something goes wrong and the world freaks out. They start putting blame on everyone. They start basically the fear starts acting toxic. And I think what I'm going to choose if I had more time, I wouldn't design it like this, but there's the newscaster in Monsters, Inc. that says now is the perfect time to panic. panic! <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's the Mon. It's just that guy. It is specifically that guy is the, the society panic Mon. I love him. Okay. So there were two questions. What was, what was one of the, what was the first question? Or? Uh, theme song for your character. Theme song for, oh, uh, for Kike. Ah. Yeah. You could also choose Malaya. But I think they were asking about the main no, character. No, I mean, for Malaya, it probably would be like, another one bites the dust, you know? Like, mm, that's... Mm, mm. Another one bites the dust? I was thinking something similar, which was We Will Rock You. Oh, Just yeah. Just that solid, like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Kike, I don't know. I mean, it's a song... I don't even know how I came across it. It's called, like, El Fusilado, which is, like... Like a story about this one guy that like they try to like do like the death row like boo, 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 like uh shooting, but he survived. But it's like this whole story of like him being like, Oh yeah, this is how I died, and then being like, 
but I lived and like I feel like this is something that like I guess I'll always picture the Kike singing that to like his kids being like I'm gonna tell you this time how I died for sure uh... and this like whole story and then at the end is like but I lived it wasn't that that wasn't how eh, you know and so like I always just and it's it's not in Spanish but like the title is in Spanish so like I, I feel like it kind of hey there Ariel let me tell you about how I got these scars. Yeah, like, I just find it funny. Oh, like, he's finally going to tell us. And then he's like, but I lived. That wasn't how. Eh. And so, I don't know. I just I just find it funny. Fair. I can respect it. And then this the song I recently listened to, it's going to be related to Kyle's, and I hate this. So, like, I have been re-watching all or like watching every Disney movie chronologically as uh, just because I, as a fun thing because uh, yeah. I want to watch all of them and the last one I watched is Aladdin and so I've been listening to the soundtrack a lot not of Aladdin but of the parody musical of Aladdin called Twisted which is yes, from the yes, same yes, people yes. that made the musical that Kyle talked about which like Twisted is, is just about like Basically, Weekend with Jeff R. and Aladdin is is the worst. But anyways, I've been listening to that soundtrack a lot. So like, one of those songs, I think I think Orphan at thirty three is the one I most recently listened to. But like, I listen to them a lot. So I feel like my Necromon would probably be like like a Dito, like a parody Necromon that. But instead of just being like the face with the little thing, it would like transform into a parody version of or like an alternative version of the person that it's uh mimicking and the name of the necromon would change like what it says in reverse depending on who it is uh mimicking i really like the idea of ditto singing take off your clothes Whoa. princess take off, princess your pants. take off your pants it's you scared the dog. <laughs> I also love how many Ditto Mon we have. We have so many copycat Mon that it literally became an element. Excellent. I mean, why not? I mean, Ditto's the best Pokemon, so... Emily, what is what is the good theme song for Irene? And then make a Mon based on uh, the last song you listened to. So I think... I've been sitting here through the entirety of both of your answers trying to think of something. And I You mentioned haven't. one the other day. You mentioned Little Miss but, Perfect, the well, one that's used the, in the all of the... The funny thing was, I was like, oh, that... I couldn't remember what it was like, but I remember that they used it for Amity Blight, and then we listened to it, and it fit Irene even better. Straight hair, straight A's, straight forward, straight path. I don't cut corners. I make a point to be on time. Head of the student council. I don't black out at parties. I jam to Paul McCartney. If you ask me how I'm doing, I'll say, well, hmm. Well, hmm. A pretty girl walks by my locker. My heart gives a flutter, but I don't dare utter a word because that would be absurd behavior for Little Miss Perfect. That's so cute. That's that's very Irene. On one rest, friends, I want to get into just just have a moment of serious sincerity about Irene's sexuality. <laughs> All right, we will we will get into that when I am not uh, sweating out of my asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> Billy, I'm so sorry you have to live with this. All right, and then if you could have a mon based on the last song you listened to, Emily. So there was a question on, I don't know if it was Tumblr or Discord or what, about Hades Town. So I've been listening to Hades Town again. I love that we all have lis been listening to musicals. This is just excellent. Yeah. Right, let's continue. Uh, the last one I listened to was Our Lady of the Underground. Um, Ooh. So a little wispy wormy little purple creature that um it's not another ditto but it shows like 
different textures and surfaces on its skin. It doesn't change its shape for anything. Ooh. But, like, it can change so it looks like some type of hideous neon plaid. Like Randall, a little bit. That's really cool. I regret to inform you, it probably would still be given the mirror element. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, I I tried to I I I tried <laughs> to not do the exact same thing as everyone else. All right, so that's the end of Quest Friends. If you don't want to uh, monsters at that's work, that's the spoil- end of Quest Friends. <laughs> that's oh, the end. No! Of, that's the end of Rest Friends. <laughs> I'm really sweating. Uh, but I wanted to quickly mention a spoiler. If you've been watching Monsters at Work, uh, now is your excuse to leave because I'm going to cut this off pretty much as soon as I reveal it. Um, turns out Randall's back in Monsters at Work season two. Oh no. Oh. And that was what I was looking for. Good night, everyone. <laughs>